I'm Dan Roshan. I'm really excited for this conversation. Ron is the founder um, and one of the uh, head coaches of yourperformancepeople.com. And essentially what that means or what that company is, is, is a talent development company. And uh, he is in the business of helping people to get the very best out of themselves. And I would say he's, you know, I would describe Ron as a, as a mind architect, you really, really just, you know, understand how the mind works and how that interacts with the spirit and the body. And I thought today in the times of, uh, we have a lot of people that are concerned. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world and, uh, wanted to, you know, invite Ron and, and have a conversation about how can you, how can we deal with that? So hello, Ron. How are you? I'm doing great, Dan. Thanks. Great to be here. Good, good. So, Ron, so thanks again for joining us. And there's, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of uncertainty uh, going on in the world right now. And, and, and I was curious, you know, tell us a little bit about how that, you know, what actually goes on in the mind, you know, yeah. and how's that reflected in the body and somebody that may be experiencing concern right now, what, what's happening here? Sure. Tell us about that. Uh, that, that that's a great question. And, and you know, I, Dan, I just wanted to take, start it out by saying that, uh, you know, our company, uh, my wife, Kate, and my uh, daughter, Courtney, are both uh, founding members. And uh, we basically specialize in um, assisting people to look at things that are like going on right now. We're working very heavily with our clients to have them look at how do they become more uh, effective? How do they use their mind to be productive with uh, when, when a significant event happens? And so, you know, to lead into that, if you look at it this way, um, we get exposed to something happens and then we're gonna to respond to, to what happens. And each person, I think you'd agree, is gonna be a little bit different. So, and I think we would agree that with what's happening right now is pretty significant to, uh, to most of us in the world. I don't know if there's too many people that wouldn't think it's significant. And it's significant in two ways. Uh, you know, we have the pandemic, uh, you know, an explanation of the pandemic, as most people know, is you, know, you have something that's spreading uh, in this case, it started with, with the virus of, you know, Corona-19. And then uh, we also have what it's kicked off is also what we feel is another pandemic. And that's a, that's a pandemic of emotion. And I think that uh, one of the primary emotions that many people are experiencing is the emotion of fear. And so I just like to just give a very simplistic view of um of a neuroscience perspective of how our brain works. So if you, we look at it this way, just picture our brain in three parts. So um, the, bo the bottom of it being a foundation would be what we call our, our brain stem. And that's the very primitive, the oldest part of our brain. And um, that is uh, basically wired uh, for, to be reflexive and for our survival. And so when a significant event like this happens, it's not unusual for that to be stimulated. Um, and this is where our fight, flight, or freeze part of our behavior comes from. So if you can picture that, a significant event can trigger the activation of this area to fight, flight, or freeze. So the first thing that I would ask the audience to, to look in, to just reflect on for yourself, are you the type of person when something happens, when you get triggered in a significant way, are you a fighter or are you somebody that retreats or are you somebody that would actually uh, be in inaction or more freeze? And uh, so the first, the first part is to recognize that. And uh, so once you understand that, uh, what ends up happening in that the second part of our brain, that second piece that I'd like to talk about is the emotional center of our brain. And in that piece, we have a, a part called the amygdala, which is a, a part of our brain that's literally monitoring what's going on in our environment. And so when it feels like it's in threat or it's being overwhelmed with new stimulus, doesn't know how to figure things out, it gets very stimulated, uh, that's where the emotion of fear, for example, will come in. And when we have high, um, high intensity emotions like fear, uh, what can end up happening is we can have that sense of having too much on our plate or feeling overwhelmed. And I think for most of us, we would agree that uh, for many people, many of us, we're going through uh, something that is fairly unique. We haven't had, we haven't experienced in this lifetime before. And so that can cause this part of the brain to be, you know, as it's attempting to figure things out and get a context for it to be highly stimulated. And when that part it gets highly stimulated, or you have that feeling like you're overwhelmed, 
Then what ends up happening, the third part of the brain, which is the newest part of our brain, and that's the part where we most of us operate, uh, the, is the prefrontal cortex is the area where uh, it's called the executive center of our brain. It's where we think, it's where we're creative, it's where we strategize from, and, and those types of areas. So I would have just ask our listeners, and Dan, you might want to reflect on yourself, is as sure. you've experienced this, like what has occurred for you? Are you attacking, retreating, freezing? Um, what? How is your clarity, your ability to focus? And regardless of what's happening, is know that uh, that you're human. And whatever response you're having, uh, you're having that response because it's a response of the brain. And so, yeah. uh, so do you have any questions, re, any clarification around what uh, what we just well, covered? I, I'm clear on that, Ron. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What? So tell me, uh, so that's the way that the, the brain operates. Mm -hmm. And so you've got that, the primitive state of the fight or flight or freeze. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you've got the state of of looking for stimuli, right? And the emotional part, and the and the right. emotional part, yes. right? And then, yeah. and then and then there's the the what we normally operate from our cognitive is, part of our brain, yes, yeah. where, where we actually function. So if you look at, uh, you know, people right now, they're working from home. There, you know, our lives have been interrupted, disrupted, with however you want to put that, and that can how we react to that you know, from a programming standpoint, a mind standpoint, and then the impact of that on the brain can make a huge difference. So what are some strategies? So now that we understand that here's sure. what's going on, well, let me, let me sidetrack the mm -hmm. strategies. What, how does that show up? And then, and then we'll get into strategies. So, so here's how we're processing. Right. Right. And then, yep. so for me, I um, typically am a fighter. Uh, if mm -hmm. you put back me in the corner, I'm going to come out swinging. Um, Good or bad, right? Like what you said, it's like it's a it's a human condition. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so what you know, what what other like how's that going to sh like show up in the real world of yep. of the fight or flight yep. or the freeze? Yeah. So, so let's take a look at that just to put it into context. So, Dan, let's say that you know you and I are business partners, and so you're you you are a fighter. So, uh, what does what does that mean in a situation like this? What has your behavior been like? Uh, what what the, kind of things you display uh thus far it's put my it, it's well the first you know it's, it, the first thing is like take care of my people right mm -hmm. and 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 do that in a in a capacity that's abundant and mm -hmm. so people are taken care of great take care of my finances and do that mm -hmm. in a capacity that's abundant right so what is it that we don't need and where can we find cash in any you know assets that we mm -hmm. have and get and get liquid today and okay. for two for two reasons, one is I see, uh, you know, having that cash, we may need it. And mm -hmm. secondly, worst case scenario, we don't need it. I believe that there's going to be some opportunities in the market, business, uh, acquisitions, sure. whatever. Sure. And then, um, so that that's the way that uh, you know that that I've been operating. So and then could the we, third could part we say like, that that's on. action oriented? It sounds to me like it's action oriented. You're leaning into it. Yeah, but it's like I'm fighting the, the situation. Like I'm not going to let that situation hit me. I'm gonna sure. hit. I'm gonna hit back at the situation. You're being pro. Yeah, and you're being proactive about it. So you're leading yeah. into it. So that yeah. would be, you know, so that would be you're leaning into it, or um, somebody that is taking and um, and fighting, so to speak, for lack of a better word, based on those primitive terms. Yeah. And then you could have somebody else that could be not sure what to do, or they are going to step back rather than advancing. They're going to step back, look to get their bearings or however they process and, and then go ahead and start taking action. Or you might have somebody that uh, is really uh, struggling to take any action because they're looking to, to piece things together and have clarity in that cognitive part of their brain in order to do that. So, so, what yep. strategies does somebody so so yep. some of those strategies can serve us some of yep. them get in our way so sure. what, what do we do what do we do okay yep. absolutely so that's a great question and so let's just take a look at if we i'm going to give you five um uh, five ingredients or five things that are that are needed by every human brain and and, and if you think about them like a, a recipe and for each person there's going to be a unique recipe some people may need more of one than the other. And I think we could all agree that at, at a certain point that uh, for, uh, for us to be truly fulfilled, we're all going to have a certain amount of these. So all five of these. And okay. the first one has to do with a perspective about ourself. 
um, or, you know, how we value ourselves. Um, in psychological terms, we could call it self-esteem. So it's how we view ourselves. Uh, the next one is how, as the element of how much influence or control do we feel we have okay. in any situation. And I, and as you're going to see, you know, with a significant event and the speed at which it, it, it was thrust upon us, if you want to put it that way, um, that sense of control is something that could be a big question mark for, for most people. All right. The next one is what is, uh, you know, how does, how do we fit in? What do we do? You know, where does this fit? Where do I fit? And how do I move forward? So, it, you know, if you were, th if you were thinking like you're hiking or whatever, you want to have your compass, like a sense of orientation of which direction to go in. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then um, the next one is, is, uh, is, and you had mentioned it before we got on, it's a sense of connection. It's like an attachment to other human beings. We are, we are tribal, but you know, we're, we're tribal animals, you know, that saying no man is an animal uh, as, as an island is really true. Uh, even, even the people that are, you know, introverts at a certain point, we all need a certain amount of human connection. I mean, it's a psychological you know, psychological need. And then the last one has to do with pleasure. So if you look at those five, you know, uh, then you start to look at for each person is looking at what is, what may be missing. So let's do use, use you as an example. Okay? okay. So if you were to look at that in those five, you know, that, that how you see yourself, that valuation, um, a sense of control, uh, a sense of, you know, where do I, how do I proceed? You know, what's my, moving forward direction kind of thing, um, a sense of attachment, that connection, closeness with other human beings, uh, or pleasure, which, what, which, which ones do you feel have been impacted that may have been? Yeah, I would, yeah, it was the physical or the uh, connectivity. Uh, absolutely. Okay. I think the, the, the other one could be a bit of the control be, uh, based off of a lack of certain future. Mm -hmm. so, so there's there's a lot right now, it's like, okay, what can I do today? Do that uh, and what may happen in the future, prepare sure. for that. But there's a lot yep. of, of, of the, yep. you know, we don't know what's gonna happen. We, we right. don't know if this is gonna be a right. lockdown for three years. We don't know that, yes. you know, God willing, yep. if not, right? Yeah, so I would say it's those two primarily for most. For right. So, so it sounds to me like it's it, it may be the connection piece and also, yeah. Um, you know, how long is this going to last? And in the meantime, what do I do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, and so for each person it's going to be different. And, and, and so as far as strategies go is when, when a person can determine what might be missing. And, you know, I would just say too, that initially, uh, it seems that it's not just, there's not a, a, a an absolute here initially there's there's going to be one or two that that are m more impacted and so if we can get those stabilized start to see those you know now you might start to see a move around so for example like here in austin we've been um i think quarantined or whatever <laughs> whatever you want to call it um, lockdown <laughs> locked down into our houses i think we're yeah. uh this is our third week maybe yeah and so i gotta tell you like for my wife kate and i um, it's a little different after the third week than it was after the first week and after the second week. And so, you know, now we're looking at, um, you know, are we, how do we have more pleasure? How do we have things that are more enjoyable? Because, you know, we're, we're in the house, we're not going, we're, we're social people. We generally go out, you know, to restaurants and that's not available. Curbside is, you know, yesterday we did curbside and, and you pull up and then, you know, somebody comes out, puts the bag in your car and, and you drive off. It's this whole different experience. So you, you so, slow down and they throw the bag into your car. <laughs> that's right, pretty much, pretty much. So with, with that said, I think we can see that, you know, things aren't the same in these different areas. And so now the question becomes how, if somebody is feeling like they don't have as much control, what are the things that they can do uh, to get more control? Right. Okay. So they have, and see, because if you think about it, if we have, if we have a sense of, having more control or influence, um, then, you know, then we're going to, then that need from a brain perspective is going to be, is going to be increased. And the okay. reason that becomes so important is because, because of this is when we get in a situation where, 
Um, you have a high in, higher intensity feelings like fear, and that's chronic, maybe it's more persistent. Um, that produces, that fight or flight condition produces cortisol in our body, in our brain. And cortisol is, you know, is very oxidative. It's very, um, it, it's very debilitating to us long term. You already know, 87% of all real estate agents fail in this business. And you also know it doesn't have to be that way. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income, I invite for you to get your free copy of Real Estate Evolution, the 10 step guide to CPI, consistent and predictable income for real estate agents. And you can do so when you visit www.therealestateevolution.com. I'll share with you your book that I authored to show you the way. And it's free. You just have to pay for the shipping. Thanks. So the whole idea here is to uh, look at what are, you know, what's going on and what's not being met and get those met so that we reduce as that gets met, there's less stress or strain. If you want to put it that way, you're more, you're more relaxed. And as you relax more, that lowers the secretion of cortisol. And as we start to feel more accomplished, it actually starts to uh, flood our body with, uh, with dopamine and, and hormones that actually have us feel good. So I was talking to my neighbor this morning and, and he was talking about how uh, on Sunday, he finally just decided he was feeling out of sorts. So he sat down and he wrote a list out and he had like 32 things on it. And he just decided to just get at it. Right. Okay. And so he started getting, he says, I got so much done. He says, I felt so good. All right. And we were joking about this because um, I don't know if, you know if you've ever done this, but I know I haven't. He, you know, he admitted to it too, is you'll have a list of things and you, you uh, do something and you didn't have it on the list. So you put it on the list and you cross it off. <laughs> you know, yes, I've done that before. And there's a lot of us that do it. And the reason we do that and why it feels good, as crazy as that seems, is because there's a sense of accomplishment. And there when you we go. feel there you go. Yeah. There I'm you gonna go. add I'm gonna add some stuff that on there now that I know I have permission you, to do that. There you there you go. So so as crazy as that seems, is that is giving us a sense of accomplishment. And as we start to feel um that sense of accomplishment or that sense of control, it relaxes. So the cortisol goes down and we're looking to raise the dopamine and, and feeling those feeling good feelings. Right. And if you look at it from a performance state, when we're feeling okay. good, we are more creative. It opens up that prefrontal cortex. So we're sharper, we're more cognitive, we're more creative, we're more collaborative. And that's what we want in this, in these times. Okay, and someone's so, asking, is that a bad thing? Is what a bad thing? I don't know the context of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, whoever's yeah. asking that, give us some context on that, um, if, if that's a bad thing. Um, while we wait for that, so so taking a look at, okay, to to, to sort of feel that accomplishment and, and, and feel sure. that we're getting things done, then that would be a strategy to be able to if to, to have a, a feeling of, of sen a sense of security a, a sense of stability sense of, sense of control for yeah and it's it, it can be a myriad of different things like i'll, I'll just say for myself uh, i find that um i can't control what the government's going to do i can't control what other people are going to do i can't control whether you know on uh, april 13th where we were supposed to come off of our quarantine or, you know, <laughs> lockdown. And that may or may not happen. Um, I have a positive expectancy that that's going to, okay. if that changes, then I'll deal with it then. But in the meantime, I look at what do I have control over? So um, I've attempted to keep as much of the beneficial routine items that I have in my life. So for example, exercise is really important to me. Uh, journaling, meditating, uh, you know, spending time with my wife, Kate, and us having, you know, having deep, you know, intimate conversations about things that matter. Those kind of things are, are important to me. Now, some of those things may not be important to somebody else. The key is, is though, is finding out what are those things that give you a sense of things being good, 
all right, or, or you feeling better about things. Organizing your closet for some people, organizing your house, organizing your office. You know, some people are doing all kinds of projects right now and that they put off for a while. That can be very helpful. Now, the only thing I would say to business people, specifically real estate agents, and this is an opportunity now, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's, discipline yourself or, or set yourself up, schedule yourself and get your business things done and then set these projects like organizing your closet or painting something that you didn't get to or whatever that may be and use that as something that you can go and pivot to after you do your work and as you accomplish that now you did your work and you're feeling good and and you're getting that that hit of dopamine and then do your project and as you're starting to accomplish something with that you're feeling um you know you're feeling in a better place as well and you have a clean closet there you go. And that's it. And, and the, the, the final objective. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Facebook and I can't see. Uh, so when you're watching this on Facebook, I can't see the questions. But the user is asking, uh, is it a bad thing of creating an item to cross it off right away? So well, um, first of all, I'm going to just say to anybody when it comes to there is no good or bad. All right. I think it's just I think what's what we, becomes important from a talent development standpoint and a coaching perspective for for how we approach things. If somebody thinks it's bad, then, you know, that may not be serving them. So we're going to need to find out, like, what is what do they feel is that having an adverse effect? And, and if so, then um, how do we look at it differently? OK, mm. so. Um, I would just put it back on the Facebook, uh, the, the, the person who is asking the question is, how do you feel when you do that? So you take a, a second, you write it down, and then you cross it out because you already did it. Does that make you, does that feel good? Does that give you a shot at dopamine? Well, if it does, then, you know, then you can, then you know your answer to the question. You know? Ron, go through those, hit, hit, share those five things, uh, just like at a bullet point one sure. more time, because you, you, you went yep. deep dive on one of them, but I want yep. the, the listeners to hear those five again. Yep. So the first one is how we see ourselves, our self-image or, you know, how we value ourself. Uh, okay. Call it self-esteem from a psychological, you know, psychology 101 perspective. The next one is control. Uh, you know, what do we have the ability to influence? Uh, the third one is what we would call, uh, you know, the technical term is orientation. Uh, it's, you know, how do we, what's our relationship to, you know, where we are compared to where we want to be and with what's happening, you know, in the, in our world. Okay. Okay. So think about that as the compass piece. And if you're not sure which direction to go, you know, that can be something that could be discerning for, for us as a human being. Okay. Uh, the fourth one is attachment, which has to do with relationship. We're tribal. And so it's, it has the ability with connection with human beings, closeness, unity. You know, what's, what's wonderful about, uh, you know, the, the, the yang in this yin right now. I mean, there's the news wants to talk about the yin, you know, this and that and all these other things. But the yang in this, I mean, look at the people coming together. Look at the outreach of people caring for other people. I mean, that is the, that's the yang here in the yin. That's the human element. That's what we're at our core. We are all, we all have that in us. All right. So yeah. that's that unity with people. And then the last one is pleasure. And that is, uh, and you see pleasure being played out right now um, on Facebook is in, with humor, you know, yeah. and funny videos and, you know, the nine things to, you know, to, to, to be great at work, you know, at, at work at home, you know, and, and the cat's jumping on something and, and, you know, that's pleasure. We, we are pleasure seeking, you know, beings as well. And so uh, you can see the mix of these, these ingredients become really important. What we've asked our clients, you know, to do on a daily basis is, you know, is to be purposeful, plan their day. Uh, okay. Follow their routines, but be purposeful, plan their day, block their day in terms of time blocks and stick to that. And then when you're done, you're done and then move on, have a project, have do pleasurable things, whatever, and have a variety, you know, connect with people. We've, you know, we've uh, have a strategy for them that we've just developed. And my wife, you know, is, is brilliant at this kind of thing that we've given them a script. We have given them a whole system where they can create, you know, a, uh, a community 
that they can provide service to and value to. And this helps these people, you know, in that community that join the community to have us more of a sense of attachment, connection, yeah. unity with people. Um, maybe they may be a little bit lost right now and it could orientate them in a very positive way. Yeah, uh, it, it could, they, right? And, and they could see, it could be pleasurable to interact with other people. It could be, you know, they, they, it could up their, their self-valuation, their self-esteem. Um, so it's those kinds of things, you know, yesterday we, we've been doing some, we really have like you, we're leaning in right now with our clients. Yeah. They are the most important, you know, one of the most important things to us right now, how they are responding. And we'd like to think that we prepared them is, you know, and this shows us that we've got some, we look at, and there's some things that we're now in retrospect, we're going to be even hard, you know, more of a stickler about. So for example, we have a lot of clients that, you know, we're big on, uh, financial stability okay you know for, for our for our clients and sure. it, we we get clients that start that are not that financially stable and it's so important especially in times like this you yeah. know to have they've got savings and yes nobody we all don't want to use our savings uh -huh. and yet it is nice to have that yeah. you know in times like this because you do have that could be a sense of more feeling like they have more control over yeah, what's sense of, going yeah, sense of security. I mean, there's a practical, like yep. practically, that's a good thing. Yet, yep. it, it, emotionally, there's also a sense of control. And and I assume if 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 you're listening to this and you don't have, you know, that safety net, then you know, there's there's other opportunities to be able to seek out for that control with you know with yep. government help and small business loans if, if you're a business owner and those types of things. Am I, am well, I thinking right on that? No, I know. Absolutely. And you know what? A sense of it, when something significant happens to us, if you notice yourself, just notice your patterns in the past, when you've had something significant happen to you, what do you normally do to get a sense of, you know, your feet on the ground, orientate yourself. So you look to get it into a perspective, you know, and you usually go back to the basics. You know, yeah. more people go back to a, to a God or a higher power <laughs> during terms like this. OK, yeah. Uh, yeah, or yeah. we go back to our family and the people we can count on because, you know, that gives us a sense of uh, potential control. Uh, yeah. So even right now, if you don't have it, maybe for those folks out there that are not in a financial position, they'd like to be. You know, this is how it can start to float over to that valuation and start thinking, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. But let's face it. In this time, you know, that kind of self-talk is, is not going to help you in the moment, right? Um, use it as something that, you know, in the future you're going to build. And why not start that future now? So you can start on that track. But in the meantime, pick something that is going to give you that sense of control that you're, you're looking for. And Dan, you, you, you uh, touched on something. When it springs the emotions, it gets that middle, you know, that second part of the brain that I talked about, the amygdala that, and that stimulates it. When that gets, those emotions get very, you know, they're, they're intense or more chronic or more consistent. So somebody is feeling those higher emotions. That's the part that we're looking. That's when the cortisol is really starting to shoot through our system. And you're going to feel the a human being is going to feel that because that is a physical response that's going on in your body. And so that's the part that we're looking at where these five, as you start to work with them and increase the, the ones that are missing, that's where it starts to settle that piece down. And then when that settles it down, you now have access to your to your brain in a very productive, more productive way. You're more cognitive, more creative, uh, more strategic, et cetera. Does that make sense? You know, there, is a, there is a condition that has been identified and it was big back in 2008 or so when we had, you know, one of the last economic, uh, sure. you know, uh, situations that we had was it was when we and the, the term that we use is uh uh is called a um oh now it, it actually escapes me but it has to do with uh, it's an inconsistent um it's a reactionary strategic uh, impulse okay. so an example of this would be um in fact they did a study harvard did a study on this they looked at companies that went into the 2007, eight, you know, that, that uh, period, they looked at where they were going in. And then three years later, they looked at how they fared. And so what they found was there was a certain amount of companies 
that fare that actually came out better than you know than they than they went in. Then there was others that that never got back there, and then there was others that didn't you know didn't make it at all. And so what, what they was found, the, yeah, yeah, what was the difference? Yeah, what what do you think it was? It was one they found one. There's there's always variables, but it, yeah. the the one of the main things that the research uh, came to the conclusion was was there was one thing. What do you think that was? I recently wrote the book Real Estate Evolution: The Ten Step Guide to CPI, consistent and predictable income for real estate agents. I wrote this book because I have sold real estate since 2007 and developed an immense amount of experience and knowledge. During my journey, I've witnessed hundreds and maybe even thousands of real estate agents fail in this business. And I firmly believe that that's a shame. In real Estate Evolution, I will show you the exact steps that I have used as a real estate salesperson to sell one to 15 homes every single month for the past 129 consecutive months. It took me more than two decades to learn the sales and persuasion techniques and more than one decade to master the real estate sales techniques to be able to produce the content that makes up this book. It took me more than a year to write at a pace of three hours every single day. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income in your business, I invite you to get the book, Real Estate Evolution, and you can get that by visiting www therealestateevolution.com and I'll even give it to you for free as long as you pay for the post. I would say it was their perspective of the situation. Uh, what, what, what was it? Yeah. Well, so what it was, it was, it was uh, the companies were reacting from that second part of the brain from an emotional. So what they were doing is they, they weren't totally grounded. So they thought they were being strategic but it was coming from an unstable or, or a yeah. lack of, of, of full clarity. Yeah. So what they did is they did deep cuts. They cut people. They cut, you know, they cut uh, the workforce and they cut all kinds of different things. And what, the, what, what people, what they found, the research showed was now people were being asked to do more with less. Those people were feeling more overwhelmed and emotionally. They were now in that that yeah. that part of their brain, that that middle area of the part of their brain that we talked about. Now that's being highly stimulated. Now what is that doing to their cognitive center and their ability to be strategic and and uh, be creative? Uh, they so that was where they saw uh, that these that these companies why they they didn't come back. The ones, the ones that thrive, yeah, the ones that thrived. Tell us about right, that. Right. Yeah. So, so it basically that I just remember the term. It's impulsive strategic, okay, uh, a strategy. All right. Or okay. the, the impulsive strategic behavior. Okay. So, the ones that actually thrived, they were strategic, and they were from they were coming from a less emotional perspective, that middle part of the brain. So they were more stable. So their, their ability to be creative, to be able to peer into the future and were, was more, uh, was clearer. And yeah. so they strategic, they really did make strategic. They weren't impulsive. They were actually grounded strategic moves. And so they were, the, those are the kind of companies that said, look at, we're, we're, uh, we're going to spread it out. We're going to ask people to take, you know, uh, everybody's going to be required to take a month off. And what, you know, yeah. there's an amazing thing going back to the attachment and the unity piece. You, when you hear the stories of what happened, you know, like maybe I, maybe you had been with the company for 30 years and I'm, you know, a young, you know, just starting out. I've only been there two years. I've got a young family. And you say, you know what, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two months off. And Ron, you know, Ron doesn't have to take a month off and he can take my pay yeah, or, or whatever. He can get paid. Well, yeah, the, you know, the, the cohesion of that is just, yeah. yeah. And, and so, and that's the kind of thing that to see is it, it, the news wants to talk about, you know, all the things that are wrong, but this is human being at its finest when the chips are down. And here's the thing. There was a company, I don't remember the name, the privately held company. They were looking to cut $20 million, $20 million out, of their, out of their operation back in 2008 or so. And so they did this. They went, the, the founder of the company said, hey, Dan, hey, Ron, everybody, here's what we're going to do. We don't believe you're all going to have your jobs. As, okay. you know, that, that's our objective. Everybody's going to stay employed, but here's what we're going to do. Take a month off. Everybody's going to, you know, uh, in the course of the year. Well, that started to happen, Dan, like I just said, you know, some people, some people that were there, they had the time built up. Hey, 
let, you know, let so-and-so take mine and I'll take two months off without pay. And so anyways, they ended up saving like 28 or $30 million. That's fantastic. And, and they yeah. came out of it in a whole different place. So the point here is this, is you're hearing a lot of people right now. And, and, and I want the, the audience to hear this. You know, it, it makes sense to really look at, at everything that your finances in situations like this, but to do it not from an impulsive perspective, but from truly from a grounded perspective, because that's where you make your best decisions. And you know, for, and for those of people that are out in sales, um, you know the whole concept of buyer remorse? Buyer remorse is actually a state that happens with a buyer. It happens to all of us. So when somebody is emotionally tilted, so that middle part of their brain, oh, they're so excited, we're gonna do this. And, and so in the moment, they go and commit to you know, a $2,000 whatever. And, and then they get home and the state changes. And now mm -hmm. Monday yeah. morning, they're going, oh my God, what, what was I thinking, okay? And notice what, what, what they're asking yourself, what was I thinking? Well, if you go back to it, it'll be like, wow, what, was I crazy? No, you were in a different state. Do you understand? If you go back to the state that you're in, it would make sense. Fair enough. Yeah. But so you're Ron, making it out over here. That's fantastic. I know that you have a gift that you uh, that you have to offer to our listeners mm -hmm. and uh, of, of the power of thinking. Tell us about that if you could. How can I yeah, get yeah, that? What just, is that? Yeah. I, um, it, 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 for everybody that's listening, all you have to do is text to this number, 866-247. One two two seven. That's eight six six two four seven one two two seven, and uh, text the word "think" all in caps. I don't know why. I was talking to our tech folks, and for some reason, it likes it in caps, and it doesn't like it in otherwise. But you know, Dan, you got to think big. You got to think <laughs> big. No more <laughs> thinking. Big thinking. <laughs> Evidently, I think the universe or God wants us to think big. So all caps, yeah. think. And when you do, you'll get uh, you'll get a link. Uh, just put your your email address in there and your name, and uh, you'll get access to a download of a classic book that's over 100, almost 120 years old by James Allen, "As a Man Thinketh." And um, it's such a great book. It's a great place for people to start. You can start to look at you know applying um, and understanding the power of your thought. And, you know, I think one of the main premises of the book is that circumstances, and this was written 120 years ago, you know, it says the circumstances does not make the man, it reveals him to himself. Well, in modern days, here's what I would say, you know, circumstances don't make us as human beings. Um, yet they do reveal ourself to ourself. And I want to just leave the audience with this. I'm looking at for myself is, is a wonderful opportunity. We're talking to our clients about this, is looking at a wonderful opportunity to really look at where, what areas of your life, you know, that would you like to see, would you like to have be in a different place? Whether it's your finances or whether it's a relationship or whether it's your, you know, your business, uh, whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, whether it's physical. Uh, it's a, this is a great opportunity. This is a call for, you know, to, to new awareness for each one of ourselves. And we can use it as a huge, a huge opportunity. So I'm just going to ask people to look at, you know, there's so much focus on the yin, which is like what's happening and all the, you know, it's, and, and yet let's focus on the yang. Like, where is the opportunity for you? Where is the silver lining in it for you? And so this allows you to make, you know, new commitments that, a year from now or three years or five years, you could be at a whole different place, financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationship wise, whatever that may be. Spiritually. Ron, yeah. thank you so much for your time. How, how can somebody get in touch with you? If I want to get in touch with Ron Potolsky, how does yep. that happen? Yep. Um, my, my email address is ron at yourperformancepeople.com. Um, our website, yourperformancepeople.com. I encourage folks to, you know, go check us out on there. You can see, you know, what we're up to, what, what we have on there available. Um, there's a way to reach out to us there as well. We have opportunities if we have coaches. Uh, we're looking for talented coaches that can help uh, us develop our clients. Uh, we have a mission to make a huge difference in the world through through coaching and 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 bringing the gifts out that people have inside of them that they may be using or may not be seeing. And uh, that's what we, you know, that's what our life has been dedicated to. And I want to give a testimonial to you as well, Ron, as we finish up, because I worked with in a previous role that you had mm -hmm. that you were that you were leading other coaches in a transformation. Yeah 
transformational uh, performance mm -hmm. pro uh, program. I worked with one of your coaches for three and a half years where he coached me and it was a, uh, it, it, it altered my life. It, uh, it, it helped me to realize the strength that I have within myself. And I know that there's a connectivity between uh, John who was coaching me and yourself. Yep. And yep. Uh, thank you for that. Yep. Well, it's our, it's our pleasure. If we can be of any service to anybody, just reach out to us. And we also have a Facebook page, your performance people. Uh, you can, you can join that page. Uh, my wife, Kate, uh, is she runs some uh, amazing, you know, th things to think about. So I highly encourage you if you're looking for for something that's going to support what we talked about today and maybe give you some more insights and, and perspective. That's a great resource to go to. Thank you again, Ron. Have a great day and thank you. My pleasure, Dan. Talk to you soon. Give us a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to Get Rock Solid Coaching Channel and stay ahead of the game.